Take from New Jersey is the SNL Nerds, a show where two comics from New Jersey nerd out about Saturday Night Live. I'm your co-host, Darren Patterson. And I'm your co-host, John Trouble. John Trouble, how are you, sir? We're in the fall now, I guess, or summer's are ending. I, Does, I, doesn't, doesn't the fall like start around the 20th? Isn't is that, that actually actually? when? Yeah, I think the, the change of seasons usually happens around the 20th or the 21st. Oh, I, I don't know how seasons work. I yeah, just, but I mean, September, yeah, we're basically in the fall. Yeah. Yeah. We're in the uh, we're in the in the in between time, the borderline. Yeah, all the, all the yeah. kids have started back to school. Yeah, uh, school stuff. buses everywhere. Traffic yeah. is builds up. I gotta I gotta wait for the crossing guard to let the kids cross before I can drive to where I gotta get to. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's neither one of us has kids, so yeah. No, we don't. We it's, don't. I, it, yeah, we just, the, the, whole, the whole school stuff. It's like yeah, I mean, that's that's nice for you. It's kind of a nuisance for us. Yeah, like you go on Facebook, you see everybody's taking pictures of their kids. Like first day back. And like holding up the new backpack. I, I don't really mind that. That's fine. Oh. Yeah. Oh, see, I was gonna be all snarky and, and jerky about it, and then you. Uh, oh, okay. Or, but were you being sincerely snarky and jerky about it, or were you being ironically snarky and jerky about it? Because I couldn't. Tell. I, I, oh, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing about being like, you know, snarky and different Gen Xer. Like you don't know yeah. if you really feel those feelings, or you're just. Doing it as a to be a poser. I don't know. There, there's a gag in The Simpsons where it's where it was like some Gen X kids at Lollapalooza, and it's like, dude, are you are you being sarcastic? And he just goes, I don't even know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, it is cute to see kids with their backpacks and like, you know, hey, mm-hmm. oh, oh, my little man's all grows up. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like that. it's really weird when I see like you know my college. Uh, classmates and like their kids are going to college now. That's Damn. just that's just wild to me. Yeah, I know. It's like I I there's like a friend of mine who I still remember when we were hanging. She was pregnant, and I, I still remember when the, the, we were hanging out one day, and like she was like very did, close. To Darren, me. did you did you get your friend pregnant? No. Oh okay. no. Okay. All right. No. Oh Lord, no. Let's okay. Not, just making sure. Let's just not making put, sure. I just wanted to, I just wanted to see where this story was going. Let, no, let's not put that on wax. Okay. No, it was it was like my friend, a friend of mine, and Kim and I, we went to hang out with them to a, a game night, and she was like, yeah, I'm, I'm about to give birth any minute now, and like the very next day after we hung out, she was in the hospital giving birth, and now that person is like like 14 years old or something. Wow. Yeah. And it's like, damn, just, oh, like sands through the hourglass. Yeah, time flies. So basically, uh, we don't like your kids because they make us feel old. Yes, if your children could stop aging just so we could still feel like we are still young and vibrant, that that would be great. Yeah, yeah, I would. I as a person would really like that. Yes. A so consider get on that, people. Yes, make it happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, speaking of kids and school, we figured, hey, let's do some school themed uh, movies uh, for this episode, and we're going to talk about the film Admission with Tina Fey and Paul Rudd. To clarify, we're, we're, we're just doing the one movie, not multiple movies. This oh, movie. right. One movie? We're just doing the one movie. Just admission. Oh, all right, fine. Yeah. Because uh, if I was supposed to watch more than one movie, I got news for you, buddy. What? I just watched the one. You didn't watch any, you didn't watch all and every movie based on schools that have an SNL connection in them? Like I, I did? did not. I did what? not. Intentionally so. This is, all right, this, this is how I find out. Right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> wow. This... Okay. I'm sorry. I thought six years of us watching one movie for the <laughs> podcast was enough to establish a pattern. So apparently not. <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to like suddenly up it, where we're like watching more than one movie and then somehow talking about two movies in yes. this case of like an hour, hour and a half. All right, fine. I guess this, we're only going to talk about one movie this episode. Yeah, fine. yeah, I think so. I think so. I think that is how it is going to work. Fine. I, listeners, yeah. I apologize. I know you expected a 10-hour podcast about us listing all the <laughs> movies that have school uh, connections, that have connections to SNL, but we're, we're just going to talk about the one. I apologize. Yeah, but I mean, hey, I did I did uh, borrow this movie from my local library, and I've got a description on the back. I could, I could go ahead and read that. If you'd like. Kick it! Tina Fey and Paul Rudd star in this hilarious and heartwarming comedy about the unexpected detours we encounter on the road to happiness. 
year in and year out, Princeton admissions officer Portia Nathan, Tina Fey, has lived her life by the book. But during her annual recruiting trip, she finds herself reconnecting with a former college classmate, oh. free-spirited teacher John Pressman, Paul Rudd. As she bends the uh, entrance rules for one of his very unconventional students, Portia puts at risk the future th she thought she always wanted and finds her way to a surprising and exhilarating life she never dreamed of having. Ooh. From director Paul Weitz in Good Company and co-starring Michael Sheen and Lily Tomlin, it's the feel-good movie critics call Funny and Fresh. Glenn Kenny, MSN Movies. Ooh. Very that, nice. that kind of turned into a Casey Kasem long distance dedication halfway through. I didn't want to say anything yet. It did feel very Casey. You get but but I went with it. I was just feeling the Casey Kasem energy. Yes. Top and, tip. Uh, yeah. Okay. Long uh, distance dedication. <laughs> Can't, you know, I got to go in from one of those up tempo numbers into a goddamn dead dog <laughs> dedication. <laughs> little dog named Snuckles. It's down on the phone. It's down on the phone. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we're talking about admission, directed by Paul White, who did uh, Apple American Fiction, no, no, American Fiction, American, uh, American Pie, Pie. Oh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> American Pie. Fiction, very different movie, very different, very uh, different. When you've been talking up to me for a couple months, and I, I, I put it on my queue, and I still haven't watched the damn thing. Uh, but yeah, if you guys watch American Fiction, if you can, it's really good. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Paul White did American Pie, Down the yes. Earth, about a boy, which about a boy, a movie I outright love. Yeah, I remember that movie being a lot better than I expected to. But I was like, oh, I really... mm -hmm. and In Good Company, too. I think that's like, I remember that being really good, too. Uh, I still haven't seen In Good Company, and I I bought it used ages ago, and I never got around to watching it. And, uh, yeah, still haven't seen the damn thing. So. Yeah, I remember that movie not doing well in the theaters, but it's it's better than, I guess, maybe the ads made it look. Go check out In Good Company. I, I, I yeah, really dug that it. That was uh, Dennis Quaid, Scott Johansson, and uh, Topher Grace. Yes, back when Topher Grace was like kind of the it guy for a little bit. Yeah, he kind of was for, a, for a hot minute there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, really like, by... I like the Topher Grace. Yeah, Topher. I'm surprised he's not in more things. Like, really. he's good. He's very yeah, good. He's good stuff. Uh, written by Karen Croner. Came out March 22nd, 2013. Had yeah, a and it was, of... it was based on a novel by, yes. uh, let's see, I have her name here. Uh, uh, it's Jean, Jean Hennef. Correlates. Yes. Yes. I, did, I had no idea this was based on a novel until the end credits. Uh, me neither. Uh, that, that was a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. uh, the movie had a budget of 13 mil, made about 18 mil, so like a modest hit, we'll say. Yeah, but it didn't. I mean, a movie has to earn like two or three times its budget to break even, so. Oh, all right. So then I don't know how numbers are. Hollywood works. Yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think it did very well. It doesn't sound like that, that's yeah. very good. Yeah, I mean, I remember the movie coming out and it was just kind of coming and going and there wasn't too yeah. much uh, hoopla around it. Yeah, I remember seeing the trailers and I was just like, well, that looks okay. And yeah. now I've seen the movie and I'm like, yeah, it was, it was okay. Yeah, that's what and I... And that's I, about I, it. Yeah, I felt the same way. It, it was kind of, you know, vanilla, all, you know, kind of... It was good. It was fine. It's, but I don't, let's talk about it. Let's try, try to figure out yeah, why I, it was just okay. This is, this is the type of movie it's really, really tough to talk about because it's not great and it's not horrible. It's it's really just fine. Yeah, and like it... it it's just kind of mediocre, which kind of surprised me because I was I was like, I really like Tina Fey. I, re I really love Paul Rudd. And I was like, oh, you know, a nice charming rom-com between the two of them. I can go for that. And... It's fine. Yeah, I mean, I will say the chemistry between Faye and Rudd is very good. Like, when they get on screen, like, it pops. Yeah. I, think. I don't know. Even even their chemistry, they didn't have as much chemistry as I was expecting. Um, cool. Okay. I, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was bad material or if they just didn't click as actors as much as I was expecting. So, okay. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing them in another movie together so I could figure out where the fault lies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> who's who's to blame? <gasps> Who did this? <laughs> Who did this? All right, well, hey, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk through it and yeah. uh, get into the movie and figure out what figure went out wrong. Figure out where it went wrong, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, so we uh, open up on uh, Princeton University. We mm -hmm. open up on... From uh, New Jersey. Yeah. From New Jersey, Jersey's own Princeton University. And uh, we get to see uh, Dan Levy as a, uh, admission, as a tour guide. 
for Princeton, giving um, giving parents and students a tour of the campus. And a mm-hmm. lot of them are like really hoping, of course, the parents are really hoping to get their kids into Princeton. Yeah, it's really competitive. They, they like quote the numbers at some point early on in the movie. And it, they, they said something, what was it like? Something like 12,000 people apply and they can only take a, a little over a thousand yeah, for it's each class. It's so it's highly competitive because I mean, yeah. you know, Princeton. Yeah, it's it's a it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> From what I understand, it's a big deal. But yeah, yeah. it's a, but yeah. So you see all these, you know, hungry parents frothing at the mouth, trying yeah. to get their kids in, and then we see um, we see Tina Fey's character Portia Nathan. Yeah, she's a, the uh, admissions officer at Princeton. Exactly, and then of course yeah. all the parents kind of hover over her. It's like oh. Like what do you, what do you have to do to get in to get well, how can I get my kid in what do I do what do I what do you want you want money yeah, yeah they they all want the, the secret formula and I mean it's literally like oh if you if you say the secret password your kid will automatically get into Princeton that's kind of what they're hoping to hear it seems like yes very much so um, uh, uh, yeah so they're getting ready for the school year and getting ready to look through all the files of people who mm-hmm. are uh, submitting for uh, for uh, Princeton. And uh, then we see that Portia gets a call from John Pressman, played by Paul Rudd, mm-hmm. who is the um, who is the director of a new school in uh, the new- Quest School. It's Quest a developmental school. school. Yes, in New Hampshire, and in New Hampshire, and he invites her to his campus to like check it out and meet some of his students, and right. and she's like, oh yeah, okay, well since you're a new school. I will go and check out your students and visit in person. Cause like part of her job as an admissions uh, director is to like visit various schools yeah. and kind of promote Princeton or encourage people to apply to Princeton. Yeah. Going like recruiting trips, recruiting trips. Yes. Yes. And, uh, and also, uh, so John Preston also quickly states that, Oh, Hey, I, I went to Dartmouth just like you did. Yeah, so at the same time as you. And yeah, so, uh, you just know that's going to come back into play later. It's, yeah. He's not just going to mention that and it's never going to come up again. And I'm like, oh, why? Yeah. That check off. Why? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah, check off gun is there for a reason. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Wallace Shawn is in this movie. The great Wallace Shawn. Yes, he he's, plays the Dean of Admissions. Uh, yeah, Clarence. Clarence. And, and uh, he announces, uh, yeah, Princeton has fallen to number two oh. uh, for the universities, and he's retiring. He wants to go out as number one for the class of 2016. So he's like, I'm retired. And, you know, of course, Tina Fey wants to step into his job after he retires. So she's got to really have an impressive year. Right. And, of course, she has um, like a bit of a rival in another admissions officer, uh, right. Corinne. Yeah, who played like, by Go- Gloria Rubin from ER. Yes, that's where I recognized her. I knew, I knew yeah. I recognized her from somewhere. Yeah, she was in on ER for I don't know how many seasons, but she was she was the the one who was romantically involved with Eric Lascelles, uh, Doctor Benton, and yes. she she became HIV positive because her her ex husband was a scumbag and oh dear, and she was like living with HIV and all that, and I oh. don't remember how they wrote her out. I, I didn't know they, you were. To... I don't think they actually killed her off or anything, but I, I didn't know you were a big ER fan like that. I watched the first few years. Yeah, All right. I mean, I mean, come on. <laughs> okay, no, I, I, yeah, I don't think I ever got into it. Oh, it's a, it's reason. a good show. I mean, Anthony Edwards, um, yeah, like... Clooney, Sherry Stringfield, who I had a huge crush on back in the day. Like yeah. I, I was crushing on her from NYPD Blue, and that's kind of why I checked out ER. Okay. Oh, okay. There. And it was also part part of you know NBC's must see TV. So you got to see it. I was legally required to watch. <laughs> exactly. It's it's in the bylaws. It was like I I must see this. That's how it works. It's must see TV. If I it's don't must see it, see. yeah, the cops are gonna come a knocking on my door. Exactly. I don't I don't need that grief in my life. Can't be taken away in handcuffs in front yeah. of my neighbors. What? Yeah. You don't want that. Anyway, she was on ER. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we see that uh, Porsche is basically a very level-headed, um, career-driven yeah. uh, person who really loves her job and loves her work so much right. so that she um, doesn't have any kids. Uh, she doesn't really want any kids, and she's in a right. relationship with a uh, English professor uh, played by uh, Martin Michael Sheen. Who Michael Sheen. Yes. Yes. 
Well, and you, you need a British person in your movie. Consider yes. Michael Sheen. <laughs> uh, he's he's the chair of the English department. She's been living with him for ten years, and and they have like a quick thing where she, that establishes that she's not good with kids. When one of her coworkers says, "Hey, can you watch my my three kids for?" an hour or something and she's just like oh no and the kids immediately start screaming and blah, 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 blah. yeah um and then uh I, I, oh go ahead well yeah, then mark comes home and then mm-hmm. he's like oh what's, what are these screaming kids doing here and then I, yeah. I believe the mom comes to collect her kids and then mark is like you can't leave uh you can't leave these kids with porsche she, you know kids hate her don't you know that like yeah he, he says something kind of yeah, right. it's really it's really painting a broad brush. Um, yeah. She also early on in her narration, um, and she doesn't narrate much in the film, so I don't know why we had the narration at the beginning. She says, uh, "I'm I'm not a sadist who enjoys saying no, you know, because the the it's so competitive. She has to say no more than she says yes." And then literally like five minutes later, we see her push a kid off her desk. And I'm like, are you sure you're not a sadist lady? Because that's that doesn't seem like a very nice or kind thing to do, even if the person is being as jerky as that kid was. As he was. I'm just like, I'm not a sadist. Five minutes later, shove kid off desk. <laughs> Get off my desk. Like, yeah, but that is the thing. They did, they did that little narration aid thing they did. They did kind of abandon it. Yeah. Like, I'm ten just minutes like, in the movie. Yeah, why, why do we do that at the very beginning if we're not going to maintain it? It's, it's just a weird choice. This movie made a lot of weird choices. It, it's going off in a million different directions. Yeah, maybe, and maybe that's why all the directions it went into made it why it was just okay instead of better than... Yeah, I we think so. I, I feel like, I mean, because it's adapted from a novel, and that when I saw that in the closing credits, I was like, oh, that makes a little more sense. Because, like, in novels, you can go off in a lot more different directions. But in a movie, you got to pare things down. And I feel like... They should have asked some of these subplots. Yeah, well, we'll we'll get into it. We'll get into it. Yeah. So, uh, so we're at this point now where uh, Portia and Mark are very happy with their lives together, or you know, or so, right. they, or so they say. And then, but Portia, he pets her like a dog. Yeah. Just yeah. Just a pat, like pat, literally pat. patting her on the head. Yeah, like on the head, which is yeah. Uh, hmm. Not not like a you know oh I'm rubbing your hair in a gentle loving way. It's literally like patting her head like she's a golden retriever. <laughs> Yeah. It's weird, is what I'm saying. It, it's uh, a little bit on the weird side, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. She, go, she goes to meet Paul Rudd at uh, this uh, uh, the, school. What is it called? The, the Quest School. In New Hampshire, and, yeah. Yeah, and he's he's got a real mixed bag of kids. It's a non-traditional school because Paul Rudd's a non-traditional guy, and she's all yeah. uptight, and oh, yeah. they're going to come together. Yeah. Um, it's a ragtag bunch of... Yeah, a free thinking Greta Thunberg's up there. That's right. That's right. And you know, she she starts in her usual Princeton spiel about, you know, hey, take out your pen and write down what you need to attend Princeton, and and nobody wants to take out a pen because they're yeah. all a bunch of free thinkers. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like we see her uh, like a montage of her going to other colleges and everybody. Yeah, all the other colleges are like, oh, let me take out my pen and write these notes, and like they mm-hmm, all take mm-hmm. what she says very seriously. Right. Uh, but when she gets to this school in the middle of nowhere, the students kind of challenge her. It's like, why do I want to be part of this school that has yeah. a history of anti-gay, anti-black, anti-women oppression? Right. Uh, Prince is an institution like an oil company is and like just really getting in her face about like, you know, Princeton is just this. Yeah. Fucking huge. You think people. you think Princeton's a shit? Princeton's not the shit. Yeah. Yeah. It's- think it's hot and, hot shit on a paper plate or yeah and so something. she she meets uh this kid jeremiah who's this prodigy who wants to attend princeton but you know he's he's not the typical prodigy he's that he doesn't he hasn't he doesn't have a great academic record um she also meets john's son nelson who's a kid from uganda that john adopted um you know, in case you just didn't like Paul Rudd enough already. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's adopted an orphan kid from Uganda. I mean, my God. The man's yeah. a hero. Yeah. Um, we meet Lily Tomlin, who's uh, playing Portia's mom. Yeah, she uh, lives in the neighborhood. Right. Uh, not in the neighborhood, but she lives near where uh, the school is. So she's Yeah, near the New Hampshire school. Yeah, yeah so Portia decides to stay with her. And the two of them have... Uh, 
interesting relationship, we'll say. Yeah, she. we find out in her first scene that her mom had a mastectomy like a, a month or two before, and she didn't bother telling her daughter. Yeah, her, her, yeah the daughter's like, wait, what? What happened? Yeah, she notices that that uh, uh, Lily Tomlin's like wearing falsies, and she's like, what What are you doing? What's, what's with the falsies? And she's like, oh, I had a mastectomy like five weeks back. And, and Tina Fey's like, you didn't tell me? And she's like, well, what were you going to do? And she's like, I could have driven you to the hospital. Yeah, it, it seems like the, the two of them don't have, like, the closest of relationships. Right. And, like, it might mainly because the mother, uh, Lily Tomlin, is, like, very insistent on insane. being... Insane? Insane. Yeah, well, that's yeah. one way to say it. But she, she, she literally says, like, she's got, like, these two dogs... Uh, and these, these gorgeous hounds, and, and she says, like, oh, dogs should get their own food. Yeah, like, part of me was like, that, that seems like abuse. If I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm yeah. And, yeah, like, because Tina Fey's like, oh, let's go feed you, and she's like, no, 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 they'll get their own food. Like, there are squirrels around here. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, Tina, I mean, because uh, Portia's mom is, seemed to her big thing is, like, she likes to be self-sufficient and not yeah. depend on anybody. Like, right. when uh, Portia comes in, she's building a bike. And Porsche yeah. is like, you know, you can just go to a bike store and get an already built bike. And yeah. she's like, well, no, that I don't want to be, I want to be able to do things with my own hands. Like, you know, women are always uh, conditioned to like lean on other men or stuff like that. And like, I want to be able to build a bike. I want to do things by myself and not need anybody. And the dog, the dog should be able to be self-sufficient too. They can, you know, chase any gophers like they were yeah. meant to do back in the, when they were wolves back in the day. Right. And it's like, all right, that she seems a little off her rocker. And like at one point, she said, "Don't you shouldn't maybe you could stop calling me mom, just call me Susan, Susanna." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> call me by my first name. I was... So they have a great relationship. Fantastic. Um, yeah, and and then like Tina Fey, she finds out like the real reason that Paul Rudd has invited her out to his his school, the Quest School, is he says, "I think Jeremiah." Is your son? Is your long lost son? Ooh. Yeah, that's a whole thing. Cause like that's a big plot twist I wasn't expecting. Um, I was not either. So yeah. So yeah. basically, what happens is, uh, like as Portia's staying with um, her mom, yeah. uh, John calls again. Like we see John taking a very a big interest in her. Like at first we think it's because yeah. he likes her, which you know there's a little bit of that. But then like later yeah. on we find out it's because he wants he wants to do his diligence. Like he brings up the fact that oh yeah we went to, I went to Dartmouth. Right. And all these and like and so he calls her up again and say, "Hey, can we meet up for drinks? Just to talk about the uh, application process that we do right. for the quest." Of course, you know, I'm thinking, "Oh, he, he he's trying to uh, hook up," mm -hmm, as they mm -hmm. say. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there's he's a shooting his shot. Yes, shooting his shot, and there is yes. a little bit of that. And like uh, the, the two of them have a very nice dinner, talking about you know raising families and kids and right, and right, all that, and then. While uh, when John drops her back off to the house, they have like this awkward, very awkward kiss, mm -hmm. like the most awkward of kisses where she's going for the cheek kiss. And then he, he, because of the heads intersecting, yeah, it turns into a full on lip lock. Yeah. And, yeah. And then that's when I've had that happen. That's a, it is awkward. That, really? Yeah. That happened once to me where I was like, a, I was like a PA and like yeah. we just filmed, we finished wrapping some film. Mm -hmm. And um, like I think one of the producers was a little drunk, and because we were, we were at a rap party, and then it was like, "Hey there," and it's good to see you again. And she, like she was gonna kiss me on the cheek, mm -hmm. uh, and but then I turned my head, and she ended up kissing me on the lips. Yep, yep, I and, had that happen. Uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, it was my... it was end of a date. I think uh, I was going for like a kiss on the cheek, and then like she turned her head, and I'm um, like, "Oh, I'm suddenly kissing your lips." And yeah. <laughs> um, no, that, that was not that was not my design. It was, it was just like, oh shit, uh, yeah, accidental baby. lip lock. Sorry. Yeah, baby, let's do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, the, what, what? Yeah, but also like when uh, when that woman accidentally kissed me on my lips, uh, my uh, then girlfriend, now wife, was standing right next to me. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Even more awkward. Yeah. Yes, I had to be. Oh no, this. I mean, no, baby, this ain't. I I, yeah. I don't know her like that. It, it was. <laughs> It was, it was a, we all laughed about it though, but for a minute yeah. I, was, I was, your boy was sweating bullets. Right. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. My, my embarrassment was just in the front seat of a car. So no one got to see it except me and, and the young lady. But 
Still that's awkward. What, Still awkward that's and where, embarrassing. That's, yeah. that's where embarrassment should be. No audience. No. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no witnesses. Exactly. So he, he says like, oh, I think Jeremiah is your son. And he, he tells this whole, we don't find out the whole backstory until like a scene or two later where he says like, I, I was Shelly, your old roommate at Dartmouth. She borrowed my car back in the day and I looked it up. Uh, he was born on Valentine's Day of 1995 at 1 p.m. And, and that was right when she borrowed my car. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and I, I think she says like, I mean, and so that was, yeah, that's it's very convoluted. Yeah, she, she, yeah, exactly. So this is how we find out that uh, Portia did get pregnant in college. Right. She, she did have a baby. And she gave, gave it, it up for adoption. Gave it up for yeah. adoption. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, the kid was born Valentine's Day, 1995. So. Right, right. So, so now Portia has to kind of deal with all this now like oh what right. what and of course she kind of latches out like wh- like what are you what are you telling me what was all this it's right you know just just get a, stay away from me type of thing mm-hmm. uh you know and, uh, and then on top of all of this she finds out that her boyfriend mark is having twins with helen who is a virginia wolf scholar in the english department and he is leaving her for this helen woman and twins yeah and it's uh, it's wow. a humorous subplot that doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it doesn't. Yeah, Michael Sheen was kind of he's underused. pretty wasted in this thing. Yeah, like I, I mean, I saw, I know it's what they did because like it becomes like a running gag throughout the film where yeah, whenever uh, Porsche is at like some low point, yes, he he happens. If she's to crying in public or something. He thinks that she's crying over him. Yeah, and I was like, all right, that's cute enough, but I don't know if it was. It's cute. a funny-ish idea. It never. Like this movie isn't as funny as it should be, I, or I don't. I don't even know if this movie wants to be a comedy or if it just wants to be like a comedy drama thing. It's it's very. It's like neither fish nor fowl. It's very strange. Yeah, it, it's. I would put this in like probably like the rom com type of category. Like it's almost yeah. a Hallmark movie, but not quite. Yeah. But you know, a little uh, bit, you know, different. Yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah, yeah. So. Like when she gets back, like you shoot a Mark comes clean at some uh, big kind of uh, reception that they're having for all the professors. And that's when he's like, oh, hey, you're back. Uh, well, I'm leaving you now because I, I knocked up a, a, right. a Virginia Woolf scholar. Right. And like she's going to have my baby. So peace. Right. And uh, yeah, so that's that's not good. So so she starts freaking out over that, over the breakup and over the whole Jeremiah possibly being my son thing. Um, she, we see her crashing a party, uh, like a fraternity party to check on Jeremiah. Cause uh, Jeremiah is like visiting the campus. To yes. Uh, Jeremiah, John, out. yes. Jeremiah, John and Nelson visit the Princeton, right. uh, you know, the campus and right. And where out. they do that thing where like you stay with a current student and then you check it out and then, you know, you go to a fraternity party or two and right. you get an idea of what the university is like and what the culture at that college is like, and yeah, I, I did that before I went to college. I did that with a couple colleges. Oh, cool. Yes. So. How was it? Did you get a good vibe of the place? You're like, Oh, this, this um, I mean, that's how I ultimately decided on, uh, where I ended up going university of Evansville. Um, oh, nice. and I, I went to another couple places. I remember doing that at least one other place. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. Groovy. All right. You hear that? Kids? Back some memories. Yeah. All right. Hear that kids. Check out some colleges. See what's up. That's right. And uh, she's she's getting very overprotective, and she like takes Jeremiah out to buy a toothbrush. Yeah, I thought that was sweet. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So she's kind of, kind of, you know, spy. She's trying to figure out what all this means. Uh, right. She talks to her mom. Yeah. She about, hasn't said anything to the kid. She hasn't said like, "Hey, I'm your mother," or "I'm yeah, no. your mother." Yeah, no, that she, has not happened yet. It's all just yeah. So. She's kind of figuring out, like, oh, am I this kid's mother? And if so, what does that mean? And that whole thing. Right, exactly. She tried to talk to her mom about it, but then the mom kind of goes off and, like, a little bit of an info dump here where she talks about how, the like, she know they basically basically telling us that uh, Portia doesn't know who her dad is and even yeah the mom doesn't know who the dad is because she just wanted some sperm to have a baby. So she got, she got laid by some dude on the New Jersey Transit. <laughs> And like she doesn't know who was the it guy actually is. on New Jersey Transit, or was That's, it just a dude she met on New Jersey Transit? 
I thought it was on the train, like not. There well, was, that sounds unsanitary. I've been on. I've been in New Jersey Transit. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, yeah. It could happen. I, I would. Ooh. Yeah. I have. I have seen some things on New Jersey Transit. I have not seen that. Um, I've. If, if I did see that, I feel like I would move cars. <laughs> yeah. I have. I have seen a woman throw up, but that was on the on the New York Path train. Oh God. Um. Yeah. Right, right on the floor. Um, she was sort of, she was like drunk and sort of half asleep, so she started sort of throwing up on herself. Oh, and then you know, like, then people kind of like got her to, <laughs> you know, face down onto the floor. So yeah, she finished up. <laughs> yeah, she was in, she was not in good shape. <laughs> oh dear, that's uh, yikes! I on, honestly, if I'm being a hundred percent honest, it was kind of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was wildly entertaining. Rock and roll! It was like, I don't know this person. I'm never going to see this person again. This is kind of awesome. Pretty rad. Pretty rad. <laughs> I think I was heading back from like a stand-up gig or something like that. I was just like, wow. Yeah. Oh, only in New York. <laughs> yep. <laughs> vomit on the train. I, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anybody vomit on themselves which is un- i saw somebody smoke crack on a train once but I was oh like, well that might be my story yeah wow. no it, it was a weird thing because like it was me and you know my now wife we were riding the a uh-huh. train we were we were on the a train we we're taking it from like washington heights on down to like midtown or something and yeah like it was a pretty packed train and then we see this one guy who looks kind of out of it mm-hmm. and then like but everybody's kind of looking at him but like no one's doing anything and then at one point he pulled out he pulled out something wrapped in foil. I remember that. Oh yeah, that's that that sounds like a crack pipe. Yeah, and then he like yeah. starts to light it and smoke it. And wow. then uh, somebody exclaimed like, "Oh hell, oh hell no, motherfucker smoking smack crack on the train." <laughs> and then like like everybody moved. Uh, the next stop he got off. <laughs> everybody and uh, yeah, could you do that voice again, please? Like, oh hell! I, I know I sound like Eddie Murphy in his head. Yeah. Like, oh hell no! Somebody's smoking crack on the train. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's I a think. Great story. I think the cops might have gotten him at the at the next stop. I'm really, like, really, I, but he sounds so discreet. <laughs> yeah. Really, the, he was smoking crack on the train, and the cops picked him up. You say? I don't know how they. He he was like he was like on the low. He's like a spy. I don't know how they found him. <laughs> wow. How clueless or deep into your addiction do you have to be to be like, yeah, I'll smoke this crack on the train. That's it's, a good idea. It's a big fine. It's, you know, <laughs> everybody's cool, wow. right? You guys, are, you guys are all cool. Anyway, okay. So not throwing up, not smoking crack, getting impregnated on the New Jersey Transit. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, that's where it's all happening, people. That's where it's all happening. It's, uh, you know, big, are you ready for me, Ralph moment. <laughs> oh, God. Uh uh, oof. all right. So yeah, so we have Portia going back to the uh, Quest School. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's there while um, I think he's, she wants to talk to John. John's helping a cow give birth. Do we get like an old little right? Cow yeah, because there, there's like livestock at this at this place. Um, yeah, this, this college is really well. It's a high school. High school. Oh, it's a high school. Yeah. Oh, I mean, because he's trying to get into college. So. Yes, that's right. I, that's how yeah. schools work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's uh, really interesting. But yeah, we. We find out that Jeremiah really wants to go to Princeton. He really liked his time there. Mm-hmm. So right. Portia like wants to help him. So he wants to say, right. oh, you need to get your essay in order. You got to get your transcripts in order. Right. Uh, she gets the transcripts. But first, we got we got to deliver this baby. And yeah, yeah I don't know. I don't know and why they, they had to they push. deliver a cow. Um, we don't really see anything. It's just mm-hmm. like we see actors kind of standing behind what what I assume is like a prop fake cow. I'm assuming maybe they couldn't afford a real cow. Or well, maybe they were just like, we don't want, nobody wants to see an actual cow give birth. Yeah, um, I guess so. But yeah, like we just see them standing behind a cow and then yeah. it cuts to black while some like squelching noises are made. And then the two of them are in the shower together. Yeah, well, yeah they're in a shower with a divider. Yeah, not, not together. Not, yeah, not together. You know, not a, like Tina Fey is showering. The, the the cow stink off and yeah, the, well, the, then Paul Rudd comes to use the next shower stall and she's like, Hey, hey, didn't you see the do not disturb sign? He says, I saw it, but you're not the only one who reeks of cow placenta. <laughs> this, by the way, my favorite line of dialogue in the film. 
You're not the only one who reeks of cow placenta. I mean, and you know, like, damn it, Paul Rudd is so damn charming. He's even charming when he's talking about cow placenta. <laughs> it's a gift. The man has a gift. Yeah. So, yeah, and they're, and they're talking back and forth while they're showering. And, you know, it's the sexual tension and, and all that. Um, yeah, so, uh, we, you know, uh, Jeremiah really wants to get into Princeton, so right. Portia wants to help him get in. But like she's at this point, she's trying. She's trying to create that balance between I, I can't do anything that's like where I'm like kind of abusing my power as an admission. Right, because because she's so she so wants to be on the up and up. Like even when she and Paul Rudd are out to dinner, he's he's going to pick up the check, and she says, "No, I can't accept gifts." Right, and he says, "Like, oh well, I guess she's paying. Or Princeton's paying for my sandwich." Yeah. <laughs> by the and by the way, like if you let people, if you find that somebody else is picking up the check when you go out for dinner, order more shit. <laughs> Spoken like a true broke comedian. Yep. Oh, you're paying for this? Oh, yeah. well. Well. Lobster, yeah. please. Yeah. <laughs> Lobster thermidor. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'll, I'll have some caviar to go. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, uh, do you have any great goose on it? Yeah. Probably take... so. Do you have any great poupon? <laughs> <laughs> Would you please pass the jelly? <laughs> So, and it, yeah, so she's she's saying, like, okay, well, Jeremiah, your transcripts aren't great, but yeah. you got to you gotta have, like, you got to be a well-developed, well-rounded student. You got to have outside activities and stuff, and Paul Rudd's saying, like, oh, well, you know, he's got that. You got to come out and see and see what this kid's all about and see how awesome he is. Right, because, like, as uh, Portia read the transcript, and it's like, yeah, this is, like, the worst transcript I've ever read. He's gotten right. Ds and Fs. He's right. been suspended. He's had detention. He's he's in special ed classes. This is right. Like this is total garbage. He can't go. He can't but go. but he he took like the advanced or the like the exams for the advanced placement classes, and he like aced them all because he's right, which is which is unheard of. Yeah, without taking the classes first. So I don't know how he was able to take those exams without taking the classes, but uh, whatever. I, yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. So uh, I don't so. Know. Portia decides to help him. Uh, she mails a whole bunch of books to John about, you know, how to prepare for the SATs and the submission mm-hmm. process. And it's like she's so she's helping him. At, at this point, she feels like, well, I'm not, I'm, I'm still not using, my, abusing my power, but I'm. Just, I'm not stepping outside the bounds yeah, of what I'm supposed I'm, to do. Yeah, I'm just helping this one person. Right. Prepare for how to to submit to uh, the admissions Princeton. process. Yeah, yes. and and. Uh, Portia, she, okay, she has to convince one of her coworkers who's also on the admissions board, who's Vlad, this guy, this oh. Russian guy who's in the department. Oh, yeah, professor, professor. Of A professor, yeah. Pol- Polikov. Yeah, and he's, and like if she can get him to write a recommendation for Jeremiah, that would help his chances. So there's, there's this birthday party for John's son, Nelson. Right. And Portia's going to that, and she's taking her mom because the, Vlad, the Russian professor, is a fan of her mom's writing. Right. And, like, the professor has one of her books, and, mm-hmm. like, he, he's, uh, he, he's, uh, he's enamored. With he's ha- he has a bit of a, a crush on her from afar. Yes, exactly. He's, uh... So he's like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to this if, you're, if you bring your mom along. <laughs> Bring your hot ass moms. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah. So they go to this party. We find we find out somewhere around here that John and uh, his son Nelson they are moving to Ecuador sometime in the near future. Right. Because John has moved around a lot. He's he's been all around the world. That's how he like adopted a kid from Uganda. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's he's just got he's got a, a lot of wanderlust. Yes. Ooh, that's another movie he was in. That's right. Yeah, see what I did there. Uh-huh. Um, uh, yeah. But but yeah, and that's he's, like he's having a wet hot American summer. He's really ant man. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I tried. Porsche's kind of clueless. So of of already a brother. I don't and, know. <laughs> and 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 uh, her mom is the object of Lad's affection. And you're, you're good. Do you have this written down? You're good at this. I I, I like Paul Rudd. Damn it. I've seen a lot of his movies. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, and then we get this one scene. Well, there's, there's like a couple scenes that are happening. Right. We learn a little bit about uh, John's relationship with his son, Nelson. Right. And it has its issues because mm-hmm. 
uh, we learn that you John... You see what we mean by there being a lot going on in this movie? Yeah, because like we learn John is like a kind of guy who likes to fix people's problems, and he never mm-hmm. stays put in one place. Right. But the son, Nelson, really wants to be in one place. He doesn't like traveling as much as John does. and he, like, Yeah, he doesn't want to move. Yeah, like he yeah. likes his life to be a little bit boring, mm-hmm. which c- causes friction between them. And then we also learn from John's mom, who comes out... Like, basically, there's this one scene where... John's mom yeah. and um, Portia's mom kind of talk about how they're both disappointed in their kids. <laughs> like how they yeah. both didn't live up to their potential. Mm-hmm, where mm-hmm. like John's mom is like, oh, he could have been Harvard Law, but he gave it all up to go to Uganda or whatever. And yeah, then yeah. Portia's mom, uh, Lily Tom, is like, oh, yeah, like she she, she has, she, she's like a strong Amazonian warrior. Like she was walking by herself at nine months without any help. Right. And like now she's just doing this. Like they're both kind of. She's been at, uh, at Princeton admissions office for sixteen years. Yes. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. What, a, what, a the, steady, hell, what the hell's your problem, lady? Yeah, your child has a steady job. What's the fucking your problem? Your child has a steady job, and yeah, at I'm one of the most like, prestigious colleges in the world. I know, and yeah, somehow this is disappointing to you. I don't, I don't like, what you, Lily Tomlin. Yeah. I don't get what's going on. I don't. Um, mm. So, so at this party, Jeremiah does his. He does a ventriloquist act. Yeah, because this this is the extracurricular that John right. told uh, right. Portia about. Right, and it's and like it, it's very kind of cringy. He's got a Rene Descartes uh, uh, ventriloquist dummy, and he's <laughs> doing all these jokes of you know, like I think, therefore I am, and don't put it's, it's pretty cringy. Don't put the horse before Descartes. Right, <laughs> you, and like and yeah, we see Paul Rudd get... cracking up at it, and and nobody else is digging it at all. So you're just like, oh, this kid's bombing. Yeah, it's uh, it's 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 a very niche audience. Yeah, are yeah. you into ventriloquism and Descartes? Well, so, do, do I have an act for you? So, when, like when Portia is is leaving, uh, Nelson is in her back seat. He's like trying to leave with her. He's trying to sneak off with her. Because he's like, you're you're normal and boring. I want to be with you. Take me with you. Yeah. And she, she, of course, you know, brings him back to his father. And then that ends up with Portia and John hooking up. Yeah. Um, Just a which, which is kind of surprising. It seems a little out of nowhere because she didn't seem that into him before this. But um, I, I mean, she's, throughout the yeah. movie, there was some, there was some, you know, sparks. I mean, they kissed earlier in the movie. Yeah, they they did. Um, it's it's just weird. Like you know, it, again, so many subplots and none of them get as developed as they should. So yeah, because we see like um, we see John Pressman getting worried like he's messing up as a parent because yeah. he wants to give his son everything he wasn't given, but yeah. it seems like his son wants what he was given when right. he was a kid, which he rejected, and it's it's a whole th- yeah. Because like, he talks about like yeah, my the son just thing. wants to wear. Uh, navy blue blue blazers and listen to light fm like what the fuck is that about yeah although yeah. light fm is pretty dope i will say that <laughs> <laughs> come on listen to some nice al Jarreau. what are you talking about here sure sure yeah come on smooth man did the moonlighting theme hell yeah now you're getting it some some smooth tunes some uh so, some pablo so, cruz so portion job they they hook up they spend the night when when portion gets up the next morning she discovers that her that Vlad, her her coworker from Princeton, is still there, and he's like, "Oh, yeah. I I hooked up with your mother." <laughs> just, and just wow, <laughs> yeah. And it also turns out he really liked Jeremiah's ventriloquist act, so he's like, "I will write a recommendation for him." Yes. So so okay okay so we're 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 in the whole admissions process. For Jeremiah, we're starting to make it happen. Um, yeah, I mean, although I will say at this point, it, like him writing the um, the acceptance letter or, or whatever, it does the recommendation recommendation rather. It it could right. it could seem like oh he wrote it after uh, Portia pimped her mom. Like it could seem. Like, yeah, like yeah. The light- and, and Lily Tomlin even has like dialogue to that effect beforehand. But yes, yeah, it's it's vague. Yeah. The lines are getting blurry. Well. We don't see a scene of them actually hooking up. We just hear about it after the fact, so we don't know what actually went down with them. Yeah, we find out, like, I think at one point, like, Lily Talman was, like, on the couch, and she had, like, a wrench. She was sleeping on a wrench, and she pulled that out from behind her. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what was that used for? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like it's just a, a type of place. What, was that at Lily Tomlin's place? Yes, it was at her house. Because, like, uh, Portia goes right, to her mom's house. she's not house. far away from... Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so she she just seems like the type of person who has random wrenches lying around. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know if the wrench played a part in her sexual escapades. Maybe yeah. it did. I don't Maybe, know. Who knows? You never know when you need a wrench. Sure. Uh, so then we cut to Jeremiah's uh, interview with a Princeton alumni. Right. Uh, the, Which is apparently part of the process. I'm, I guess so. I, I don't know if that's just a thing Princeton does or... If, I'd certainly never had to interview with an alumni when I an alumnus when I was interviewing at colleges. Did you? No, I did. They yeah. just let me in. They're just like, yeah, you, you your grades look all right. Welcome, like, welcome home. Yeah, I sent transcripts. I wrote an essay and filled out an application. Yeah. I think that was pretty much it, man. Yeah, you check cleared. Welcome, welcome in. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was like, oh, you know, the, these ones say you take you. You you choose which one you want to go to, and you go to that one. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, school. That's right. how that works. Right. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the alumnus guy is really kind of, he's kind of dickish. He's a bit of a douche bro. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Paul Rudd like calls the guy a prick under his breath before he's out of earshot. So mm. no, dumb move, Paul Rudd. Rookie move. Rookie move. Rookie move. Um, uh, yeah. So... But, but he can, he can tell that Jeremiah, Jeremiah is such a non-traditional kid. He's, he's not going to go over well with this dude. Yeah, like I think at one point the interviewer is like, "Say, hey, so how, tell me a little bit about yourself." And he's like, "Well, what, yeah. what do you mean? Like, is, like my metaphysical self or my yeah. <laughs> exploratory self?" Like you, you get the feeling this kid's on the spectrum somewhere. Y- yes. Oh God, yes. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I, dollars to donuts. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, so uh, yeah. So they have the interview. We get the I feeling that it didn't go well. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so Portia has to figure out other ways to help Jeremiah get in. So she kind of bur- right. f- buries the hatchet with, uh, with her, her, rival. Her, her rival Corinne, but she's kind of faking right. it just to get hit her on her side when they have to accept uh, students. Yeah. yeah she's kind of doing favors for the others to like, yeah, kind of mend fences, build bridges, whatever. Yeah. Like you can see, like she's constantly kind of blurring the lines of what is acceptable to do as an admissions officer and what isn't. Cause she's really, right. she really believes in Jeremiah, and she really believes he belongs in Princeton. Right, right, because he's he's like uh, like self educated. He like yes. there's a flashback thing where he's saying like, oh, from the age eight, I kind of realized that teachers wouldn't be able to teach me anything. I had to like do my own education. So he's like totally self taught. Yes, he's uh, autodidact. Yes, that's that's what they said. Yes, I was yeah. like, that's that long word that means something cool educational wise that I don't entirely know the meaning of uh it just said the self-taught person from what i'm seeing yeah i think yeah he's like a polygod i think they call him a polygod at one point Ooh, so fancy yeah yeah very fancy and yeah. uh, so we so we have like a big scene where it's all the the princeton admissions team and and everybody has like their own region of the country so they've all been traveling to different regions of the country to go to different high schools meet different students and all this and and then they review everybody's application they they write if you know high probability, deny, accept, blah blah blah. But then they go over every single one mm. in this marathon, at least three day session. We we see like I think at least three costume changes. Yeah, yeah. So they just they're choosing from the freshman class. They start in the West Coast. Right. <clears throat> uh, yeah. We see total the, totally random order. Yeah, yeah, totally random order. Uh, we see uh, Corinne kind of fighting for this one person to get in, and the other people are on the mm. fence. But then. Portia sides with her saying, I think we should let this person in. Maybe I looked at that person's file and maybe I was a little bit right. hesitant at first, but I think this person has the passion. But she's on, but Portia's only doing that because she knows she'll need Corinne on her side when she wants to get Jeremiah in. Right, right. Yeah, so she's kind of, yeah, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Exactly. Sort of there, there's a, a good amount of that. So and, and while they're discussing the students, we see like the students – standing there in the room they're not literally in the room but they're there and like when a student is rejected they 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 open up a trap door underneath them and then they just fall out of the frame and i'm just like where did this scene come from where why are we suddenly doing this surreal humor like an hour or more into the movie it's really weird it's it's so out of nowhere yeah like if if that's like i mean i understand what they're trying what they're trying to do they're trying to sort of make you really feel the uh, 
I guess the repercussions of the actions of all these mm-hmm. admissions officer where like, yeah, like, we, we kind of choose these children's fates and futures. So like, yeah, they, I mean, I that's fine. It. It's just not in keeping with anything we've seen in the movie up until this point, which is why it weirded me out. Yeah, no, I, I get, it. I mean, I, I get what they were going for, but yeah, yeah. It did kinda... but it's, like, it's just totally a different style of humor, a different style of movie. Yeah. Fair so, enough. Fair enough. Yeah. So, um, so Portia, when they finally get to her, she's she's like the last region because they they choose the regions they're going through randomly. Um, and Portia, she presents twenty eight denies in a row to kind of prime the pump, I guess, for Jeremiah. Right. This is all. And yeah. And you know, you don't get the sense that she's intentionally sabotaging any of these students, but she's just kind of presenting a lot of borderline cases at best. Right. To, yeah. To you know, try and make her choice look really good. Yeah, she's 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 uh she's playing chess, not checkers. Right. Yeah, and then she finally presents Jeremiah, and yeah, and his academic record's not great, and she emphasizes, oh, but he's you know he 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 did all these these tests, and he did really well here, and da da da, and he has these extracurricular things, and you know who votes yes, and like. Like only one other person, I think, votes yes. Not even her rival votes yes because mm. Gloria Ribbon's not a good person in this movie. Mm. Yeah, like she unfortunately she doesn't convince any of the other officers yeah. to let him in. Wallace like, Shawn's like, no, nah, no, nah. yeah, it's, it's too big of a risk. He's, yeah, he's just not Princeton material. Very much so. So yeah. it's uh, yikes. So it's a no, and we see uh, Jeremiah fall through the trap door. Right. Right. And then not long after, Portia gets a call from a guidance counselor who tells her about a student by the name of Jesse Bolton, who was somebody they accepted. And the guidance counselor tells her that he is definitely going to Yale. Yes. So and why is the guidance counselor telling her this? I, I do wasn't not clear on that. I do not know. Like, he just calls her up randomly and says, oh, this guy's definitely going to Yale. So he's not going to Harvard. I don't know if he's just trying to give her a heads up. I don't know if this is something shady. I think so. I on. think that's it. I, I think that he was thinking, well, if he's not going to Princeton, then maybe right. they could use somebody else could use his spot. Right. Yeah. It's probably something like that. He's I guess he's just giving her a heads up. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I, I guess that was a, just a common courtesy type of thing. Right. But but we see, like, a scene where, because they make a very big deal, because, you know, again, where Princeton's so prestigious, they make a very big deal. There's no sort of appeals process. You know, their decision is final. And they even, like, after they're making all the calls to tell people, well, I I guess they're not making the calls. They send the letters, because yeah. that's how colleges do it. But they're, they're, they're fielding the calls after. And they have a chart of... On one side, it's like all the nice things that people have said. And on the other, it's like, oh, uh, here are all the awful things that people have said. And we see Tina Fey like writing on the chart, like, I hope you get rectal cancer. Ooh. Which she's like, that's a new one. Um, uh, people are passionate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, having having done uh, phone sales jobs, I can I can relate to people people saying horrible, horrible things to you over the phone when they're. Ooh, what's, what the, they want. what's the worst thing somebody said to you? Um, this was when I was working for, uh, Tiffany and company doing phone sales for them. Okay. And, uh, Christmas time, their busiest time of year. Yeah. And a lot of it is like, you have to, when people have their orders, you have to like kind of monitor their orders and make sure that they're going to arrive on time. Like, you know, Christmas Eve at the latest. Yeah. And if it didn't look like they were going to arrive on time, usually because of weather conditions or whatever, or they're cutting it too close. Um, you have to call people and say like, Hey, you know, just so you know, this might not arrive in time. And I had one guy who told me I fucked Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You fucked it. I fucked it. You, you fucked in it. In my defense, I totally bought Christmas a nice dinner for Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I will, I will um, take her out for a nice seafood dinner and I'll never yeah. call her again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, champ. Uh, 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 yes. And by, by the way, you know, you, we get, you know, we work up to Christmas Eve, we get Christmas Day off, and then, you know, you come in December 26th, and then, of course, you have to, like... It returns. Return all the returns and exchanges and all that. And, oh. you know, and, thing. and I, you know, did my due diligence, I checked up on that thing, it arrived on time for Christmas. Son of a bitch. Yeah. People get, I, I know, it's a thing. People, people get really caught up. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, understandably, it's you know, it's emotional stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, emotions are high, but yeah. T- yeah. Tensions run high. Like, and yeah, dude, you didn't have to tell me I fucked Christmas. I didn't fuck Christmas. No. Yeah, you didn't. It's yeah. a thing where like they they need somebody to blame. They don't want to blame themselves and. You're yeah. the only person on the phone that they're talking to, so you you get the heat. Right, yeah. No, yeah, the fault is not me that I didn't order this until, like, December 22nd. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Whatever, man! <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, so in the movie, so in this movie, um, Portia hears that there's an available spot because Jesse Bolton right. is going to Yale. So right. this is where she crosses the line. She basically... Yes. Because, uh, you know... She, she, goes, she goes, like, full Lori Laughlin... Felicity Huffman. Ooh. On this. Let's do it. Let's talk about yeah, it. Yeah. She she falsifies records. Oh boy. To let Jeremiah in. She gets she gets onto like uh Clarence's laptop and she changes it from like denied to accepted. And you know, she she X's out Jesse Bolton's accepted. She changes that to a denied because, you know, right. she's told he's going to Yale. Again, not her place to decide this. No, not at all. And and then and then she has to go into the physical files because there's like a sticker on the front of the folder where they they check with a red uh, big red marker that they you know check accepted or denied or uh, I think there was a third option like standby or something. I, I uh, wait list the wait list wait list okay that's it. Um, and so she has to like switch those around or put new stickers on them or something I, anyway. Yeah. But she does this. She she like falsifies records to let Jeremiah in and. I don't know how she expects to get away with this. Well, she didn't because she gets caught immediately. Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm watching this. And I'm just like, how are you expecting this to? Yeah, she's not. She's not thinking straight. Yeah, but... at all at this point. Right, because like, and uh, basically, yeah, the very next scene, uh, yeah. Wallace Shaw calls her in, mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, I got a call from uh, Jesse Bolton's dad saying, yeah, saying he didn't get the acceptance letter, but oh, right. I know we accepted him, and then I looked at my. My records, and it says like he was denied, even though I know yeah. full well he wasn't denied. And yeah, because see... we were in a room together and we <laughs> all discussed it, and there are like a half dozen other people who discussed it. And it's like, again, how do you expect to get away? <laughs> She's just so not thinking straight. Yeah, I think at this point, I think she knew she was going to get caught because she even says it as much. But I think yeah. she was just really kind of just throwing herself onto the sword, where like I think she figured, well, if. Like, um, if Jeremiah, you know, accepts the letter before they find out what I did, then that's kind of legally binding in a way. Right, like they right. Can... And, and that's basically what Clarence says. He says, uh, he tells Portia, look, I, you are going to submit your resignation and I will give you a week to clear up your affairs, um, which seems under the circumstances very generous. Yeah, a, a full week. All right. <laughs> um. I, I mean, if, if I'd been well, Sean's position, I might have been like, you're cleaning out your desk today. Yeah. And, <laughs> like, I'm calling the cops. Yeah. But, you know, he, he they can't, they can't, like, contact the people and th- they can't rescind Jeremiah's acceptance without bringing this whole scandal to light. Yeah. And they don't want to do that. So. Exactly. So they're just handling it quietly. Yeah. They're handling it quietly. And I guess, you know, Jeremiah's in Princeton. Yay. Yeah. Jeremiah. He did it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so Jeremiah gets into Princeton and uh, right. Portia loses her job. Right. Yes. Uh, and... But they will. But they will. Stand... Yeah. So that's it. So. Uh, so then the next we see them at the at the quest school for right. uh, Jeremiah's uh, graduation. Graduation. Yeah. Uh, oh, we also forgot. We mentioned we didn't mention the part where. Uh, Portia meets Jeremiah's adoptive uh, mom and dad, and she yeah, kinda... it's a quick scene where. She, quick scene. Uh, um, what's the last name again? I, I didn't write it down. Uh, Something with a B. Balakian. Balakian, yes, okay. And she she meets them, and she's like, "Oh, you're you're wonderful," because they're, they're his adoptive parents, and and yeah, she's. I mean, every time she looks at Jeremy, she sees like this big mistake in her life, like staring her back in the face. Yeah. yeah. At, yeah, yeah. Exactly. It, it, she gets very emotional over it. So yeah. then at the uh, graduation party, uh, Portia shows up and she, you know, goes over to Jeremiah and right. tells him, you know, I don't know how to say this, but I'm I'm your mother. I'm your birth mother. I'm your birth mother. And he's like, no, you're not. I <laughs> met my birth mother months ago. She's a hairdresser. She's a hairdresser. And I was born at 11 p.m., not 1 p.m., and if you look at this birth certificate, you'll see that it's a copy and the, the other one is missing. 
So yeah, he's like, son of a bitch, Paul Rudd lied to me. Yeah, like at this point, I th- I did think that for a second that yeah. this was like all some elaborate scheme to get Jeremiah into Princeton. Like, like, oh, maybe if I talk to this admissions officer yeah. who I know... Like, had, he, he did research on her. Yeah, and... but I don't know. That, that would seem, like, really elaborate and really paint Paul Rudd in a bad light, which no one wants. No one wants. No one wants. So that would be... But you know what? That might have been a more interesting way to end it. Yeah. Because like, you wouldn't see it coming. It would be like it would be like say anything, you know? Yeah, exactly. It would be, it'd be like yeah. this whole... Like, he had this whole Machiavellian plan in place right. to get this kid into college. Right. Like right. uh like primal fear style shit. <laughs> yeah. I, th- um, I thought it was that, but no, it turns out Paul Rudd didn't know either. Um Yeah, it was he was an honest mistake. Yeah, and but uh, either way right. it, Porsche, yeah, a very convoluted mistake. Very convoluted. But yeah, uh we see Porsche's like looks devastated and she leaves. She tells Paul Rudd, right. Don't contact me anymore. You, you right. know, this whole what was this whole thing? Uh, she goes to her mom's house to tell him to tell her off. Right. Basically, like, yeah, you had this whole, you know, being a you know self-sufficient type of woman thing. But like, in the meantime, I got left behind and I don't know who my dad is. And right. Like, I, and, and she tells her mom uh, that she got pregnant in college and gave mm-hmm. them, which her mom had no idea. Yeah, her, her mom apparently thought she was like studying overseas somewhere. Yeah, the, the Netherlands. She's like, I was actually living above a. I, don't, I forget what she said. Like a garage. Yeah, and and yeah, I gave my kid up for adoption, and so yeah. <sighs> um, and and while she's doing this, like she, we see Tina Fey, she's like driving around town at one point, and she she drives by what she soon realizes is her ex boyfriend Mark's wedding to the Virginia Woolf scholar. Yeah, and she's so distracted by that, she actually crashes her car. She rear ends. Her car into their car, into their like honeymoon vehicle. Womp womp. Their little just married yeah. thing. And it's you know, it's yet another thing of like, oh, you're taking you're taking this breakup really, really hard. Oh, didn't mean to hurt you, girl. Yeah. Didn't mean to make you cry. Yeah. Uh so yeah. uh oh, and also uh uh we learned that John isn't going to Ecuador after all. Yes, yes. As, as his son Nelson didn't want to go. Yeah, that's another thing that yeah, again, that whole Ecuador plot, I was like, I don't know why this is in here. I don't know why this is still in here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I guess I see what they're trying to do with Paul, the character, you know, with the, the relationship. It's going between... in so many different directions. It's yeah. I, I really, I wish they could boil this down. I wish they could focus it just on the admission stuff or on the romantic comedy stuff or maybe a combo of both. But we we don't need the ex-boyfriend stuff. We don't need the, the, the rivalry with her co-workers stuff we don't need the are we going to ecuador because it never feels like a real pressing thing yeah the ecuador thing doesn't really i mean i guess it's in there to give uh the character of john more backstory to show how he like you said he has this wanderlust he goes off to other countries and works on projects and he never stays still in one place right uh i mean i yeah i guess but i I don't know if that's really needed in this story uh, but yeah, uh, so at the at, oh, we're getting towards the end here. Uh, so at yeah. the end, uh, John shows up to um, Portia's place. He apologizes, and right. then they sort of, you know, yeah, says I'm not going to Ecuador. Yeah, he's not and, going to Ecuador because yeah. he wants to make his son happy. So he's gonna right. put his son first for a while. Yeah. Uh, uh, cut to we see that Portia is living uh, with her mom in New Hampshire. Yeah, and so she's been living with her for a couple months. And yeah, and we think she's on a job interview at first, and you're like, "Oh wow, she's like really oversharing," because she starts talking about how she gave up this baby in college, and and all this, and then then we realize at the end of it, oh no, she's actually decided she's going to contact her biological son and track him down and find out who he really is. Exactly, and uh, yeah, so then they show this, then they cut to this uh, little party get together everybody's having at the mom's right. house. The mom is still, uh, you know, hooking up with. Uh, the Russian Vlad. professor, yeah, Vladimir, yeah. Uh, and um, and we see Portia and John are still dating, and they're right. they're kind of rekindling, and we see that like a, a letter came in the mail for Portia, yeah. and it's like a thin, thin envelope, thin letter in a in a blue envelope, you know, so it's kind of parallel to like the acceptance letter, I suppose. Exactly. And she's like, okay, well, this is this is obviously this is from the adoption agency, and she opens up, and it says. Your your biological son is not ready to meet you at this time. 
Yeah. And then, and it, you know, and I imagine those things don't really give you any additional context. Yeah. It's, I, I it's, it's probably is that boilerplate, you know? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I think they have to sort of yeah. keep all the emotions. Yeah, just because of privacy concerns and all that. Yeah, yeah. And absolutely. Absolutely. So, so yeah, so John's like, oh, so you, you haven't been rejected. You've just been waitlisted. So that's, that's mm -hmm. fine. And um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Because Paul Rudd's a lovely human being. Paul Rudd's the best. We talk. Yeah, about? I mean, even 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 when he's doing slightly shady stuff in this, you, you still love Paul Rudd. How could you? Everybody know? loves Paul Rudd. Everybody, man, women, yeah. children, they yeah. them. Yeah, I was convinced when when we had the big cliffhanger in the in the MCU between Infinity War and Endgame, I was convinced that Thanos was going to be defeated just because he met. Paul Rudd. And he's like, God damn it, I can't destroy the half of the universe that Paul Rudd is in. <laughs> Look that at would this. make me the world's biggest bad guy. That's... Look at this guy. He's the best. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah. He's awesome, this kid, right? Yeah. I don't, I don't know why I have uh, Thanos talking like a... <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know why he made Thanos a Guido. But, yeah, uh... it sounds like a guy from Bayonne. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this Paul Rudd guy. Yeah, remember that season Thanos was on The Sopranos? <laughs> Maron, Tony, what is he's stirring the sauce? This guy, I like this guy. He's a good guy. Good he's guy, good, 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 good guy, good guy. Nice, good earner. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's weird ending to the movie. Uh, it's it's just it's kind of an aggressively mediocre movie. I thought. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's not terrible. It's not. Great. No, it's not. It's not terrible, but it's not particularly good either, and it's, yeah. which which is what really surprised me. I was expecting, I was hoping for like you know a buried gem, uh, or or hidden treasure, or buried treasure, or hidden gem, whatever that phrase is. <laughs> yeah, this this movie is just uh, the def it's just like kind it's of a, there. Yeah, yeah, the definition of mediocre. Yeah, which I mean, it's nice, it's fine, but it's yeah, not... it's fine, and you know they're they're doing what they can. Yeah, but. I, yeah, I, th I think the story is just very muddled. I, I don't think the screenplay is that great. Yeah. Uh, I, I looked up the screenwriter, and she doesn't seem real experienced. She's, I think she only has, like, one more credit after this movie. So Yeah, I was trying to find her own. I mean, she doesn't have a Wikipedia page. and Right. Her uh, IMDb page yeah. is... Uh, this movie was, like, 2013, and I think she had one other credit in, like, 2017, and that was it. Okay. So. Show business is tough. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, hey. Um, um, a little trivia. Uh, Paul Rudd replaced yeah. Owen Wilson in this film, I guess. Owen Wilson was originally supposed wow. to be. Wow. Wow. Replaced Owen Wilson. Wow. You should look at Jeremiah. Wow. It's gonna, it was going to It was gonna be Tina Fey and Owen Wilson. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, Jeremiah. He's a I, great I don't guy. know if that would have worked better. Maybe, maybe, maybe Owen Wilson. I could see him working. I could see him being the non-traditional... Uh, you know, guy playing, you know, running the, his wacky school. I could see yeah, that. I could see that working. He's got that vibe. Yeah, the the two of yeah. them have Paul Rudd and Owen Wilson do have the same laid back kind of uh, likable vibe. Yeah, I mean Paul Rudd, he he seems like a slightly more together guy than Owen Wilson. And I'm talking about the characters they play. I'm not talking about them in life. Oh yes, um, absolutely. Um, but yeah. Did you look at the IMDb trivia for this movie? I did. It's very, very short. It's very short. And actually, I looked in the goof section, and the goof section is hilarious because most of them aren't really goofs. It's just whatever, whoever was writing these submissions got hyper fixated on. Okay. <laughs> like, okay, under miscellaneous, we have, when Portia visits the new Quest school for the first time, a student asks, why should I apply to an elitist institution with a history of anti-black, anti-gay, and anti-female oppression? Here, the use of anti is not required. Its use makes the sentence double negative. Oh, for God's sakes. <laughs> and, no, it gets better. Um, here's, here's another one. The Holstein cows are very skinny. No farmer would milk cows that skinny. <laughs> um, that's somebody really looking for goofs. It's that's like... just somebody who's like, I know a lot about cows. But, okay, here is my favorite. This is under Errors in Geography. The characters drive back and forth multiple times between Princeton and some unnamed place in New Hampshire. Under, 
Under optimal circumstances, that's about 300 miles and five hours of driving. And that assumes no bathroom food stops and no delays on the Hudson River crossing or on the shortest route, the Cross Bronx Expressway. And yet in this story, it's treated like New Hampshire is one county over from Princeton and the time and distance are simply not mentioned. I so hope I really hope somebody got fired for that blunder. Yeah, so are we supposed to believe there's some sort of magical xylophone? <laughs> I just, that's I just was like, okay, this person just has thought way too much about. I mean, I thought about it for a minute. I was like, yeah, Jersey from from Jersey to New Hampshire. That's a long drive. I mean, but movies cheat geography all the time. I that's yeah. literally not something I ever thought about. Uh, it's, but, yeah, but that and the cows. Like these cows are too skinny to be milked. All right, that that is something I would not have noticed at all. Like that was something. I hope these. I hope these were like all the same person. I hope it's just somebody who's like a, a grammar Nazi, knows a lot about cows and knows a lot about commuting from New Jersey to, to New Hampshire. <laughs> Somebody's like, oh, trying to time to put my bovine knowledge to, yeah. this, to good use here. Yeah, it also says twice Portia mispronounces her bonsai tree as bonsai tree. <laughs> All right, that's just ridiculous. That's, see, the, like the, the, these are the no, most nitpicky errors I've ever seen on IMDb. <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Oh, you, uh, yeah, wow. All right, well, that's just like I think that's more of a you thing than a movie. Yeah, thing. that's 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 you looking for problems rather right. than this movie having problems. Yeah, I mean, this movie has problems. This but, movie uh, does have. It's not perfect at all. It's uh, no the dialogue. I mean. Uh, the, the, I th- I think I might have enjoyed it more if it got like a little more satirical, like like the movie Election or or mm-hmm. the movie Bad Teacher, where they're doing like really absurd and really immoral stuff to get this kid into Princeton. I, if it gone more, if it gone like a little further, yeah, I can see. What you're or maybe it went a little more surreal, like in, in the scene where we're seeing the the students dropping through trap doors. Maybe if it had more of that type of humor, yeah, throughout, it could have been something better but yeah it's, it's kind of it's try, it seemed like a movie that's trying to figure out what it was trying to be yeah it's just there I don't, I don't feel like anybody had a really strong idea of what this movie was gonna was supposed to be yeah and it's like you said like the i mean i know the overall theme is you know motherhood and parents right. and with and their kids right the and how far theme. you go to your kid yeah for your kid and exactly or who you think is your kid and exactly but, like that was like the main theme like you know parenthood but yeah, it just uh, there were like a lot of through lines and threads that just yeah. kind of whenever. I think, and I, I, I wonder if the book's better, if the book is as muddled as the movie is, or if the book, or if they just did a mediocre adaptation of the book. Uh, I don't know, guys, listeners. If know. anybody's read the book, let us know. Yeah, it's uh, the book was published April two thousand nine. Let's see. Uh, Entertainment Weekly gave the novel an A minus rating. Okay. They called it uh, that rare thing in a novel, both juicy and literary, a genuinely smart read with a human beating heart. Ooh. Uh, Say the heart. But of- the Wall Street Journal criticized the novel for its wooden monologues and improbable love story. So okay. I, now I don't know what to think. Now, yeah. This. Is- <laughs> what the hell? I, I need I need Wallace Shawn to come in and tell me what to think. Yes. Inconceivable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's <sighs> that's the movie. Uh, admission. It's. It's fine. It's it's there. It's, it's there. Uh, it's a thing. It's inoffensive. We, we we get to hear Paul Rudd talk about wreaking a cow placent. So so yeah, that, that was probably the highest. That that was probably <laughs> when the entertainment value peaked for me. Yes. Paul Paul Rudd and Tina Fey in showers next to each other and just talking about cow placent. That's all I want from a movie. That's all anybody ever wants from a movie. Right. Let's work. That's, that's yeah exactly. So uh, I don't know. yeah, overall, eh. Yeah. Eh. yeah, has had, yeah, I thought, yeah, so so. Yeah, it's so, the so. very essence of so so. Very much so. So it's just like I, I was like, Ugh, how are we going to get a whole episode out of this? <laughs> if I'd seen this before, I don't know if I would have said, "Oh yeah, let's do this movie." Yeah, but so, we did it. We got it. Whole we did it. We we have undeniably recorded a podcast episode about this movie. Hot damn! Yeah, damn straight <sighs> we did. And so, yeah, and uh, that's the yeah. episode, guys. Thanks again. That's the episode. Thanks, uh, thanks again for listening, did. as always, to the podcast. As always, you can follow mm-hmm. uh, us on Twitter, because we refuse to call mm-hmm. it X, at SNL Nerds Show. Yes. And uh, you can follow me on all the socials at uh, Darren Credible, D-A-R-I-N, Credible. And you can follow me on all the socials at Trumbull Comic. That's T-R-U-M-B-U-L-L and the word comic. Absolutely. And uh, Oh, well, also, uh, oh, I, oh, 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 I just thought of something. Hey. 
No, okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Lay it on me. If you want to hear me talk more about SNL, you can check me out. I was a recent guest on the SNL Hall of Fame podcast. Oh, that's right. Yes, yes. You 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 posted about that, and I said, "Oh, yeah, we need to mention that on the next episode of the podcast." And you remembered, and I didn't. So, way to go, Darren! Yay, Yay. I did it. So yeah, so the podcast was with uh, my good friend Thomas Senna, and uh, yeah, we just talked about Garrett Morris. And like, you'd think he'd be kind of a slam dunk person to talk mm-hmm. about, like getting into the SNL Hall of Fame, get the first black uh, cast member. But then, like, the more I kind of looked into, it, it was like, oh yeah, well, it's a little tricky because he doesn't have. He didn't have too much to do on the show. He's, he's yeah. Kinda, he was very underused and yeah, yeah. underused, and he kind of kind of went under the radar a little bit. And he didn't have many memorable characters. He has you know Chico Escuela, mm. of course, and the uh, uh, right. the president. News for the hard of hearing. Hard of hearing. Our top story yes, tonight. Exactly. But like, I was able to sort of find more about him and like really look into what he did on on the show. Like a lot of, I mean, I he was very overlooked. I mean, there's like a number of reasons for that. Like, you know, he, mm-hmm. he didn't come from a traditional improv background like everybody else did. Yeah, um, he was older. He was older. Yeah, I forget yeah. that he was like 38 on the show, and like everybody else was like in their 20s. Honestly, I thought he was a little older than that. But yeah, no, yeah, he was 38, and yeah, everybody else yeah. was like uh, young kids. So he was like the old, old black man on the show. It's like, well, what do we have right. this guy do? Yeah. But like, he, and you know. Like, I think race has got to be a factor too. Yeah, right? I mean the fact that you know there were no black writers, so yeah. they were like, well, uh, I don't know, he could be a a mugger. I get, yeah, it, there was a lot. <laughs> there was, yeah, there was probably, a lot. Probably, yeah. yeah. But uh, but he, I, I think I made a good case as to why he should be in, like, and the little things he did there to like really kind of showcase what he could do. He made a lot with the little he was given with. I, I, yeah. Ultimately, I said. So like if you go I'm back, he's gonna get me a shotgun and kill all the letters <laughs> yeah. I see. We talk about that. We did. Yeah. Well, of course, you gotta talk about that. That's yeah. one of his standout moments on the show. Give me your kill your what is I see. I mean that it, that is brilliant. I mean yeah. it's just a quick bit, but it's brilliant. Lord and Lady Douchebag. Yeah, he's yeah. had he's had moments here and there. So oh yeah, no, he definitely has moments, and I'm I'm. I'm looking forward to hearing that, and I'm looking forward to, to seeing uh, Lamorne Morris play him on the upcoming Saturday Night Movie. Oh, dude. I, opening very soon. I can't in, wait. Just about a month's time. Yeah. Like, I think they've even done, like, a platform release where they're going to release it earlier in a uh, limited release in a few places. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, um, yeah, we're, we're not sure exactly when we're going to see it, but we're going to do our damnedest to see it ASAP, just to see it as soon as possible so we can talk all about it on this podcast yeah yeah so from what i'm seeing it's going to be in uh limited release in la new york and toronto on september 27th and then Ooh. it's going to have a limited release october 4th wide release october 11th wow which is which is of course the uh, 50th anniversary of the premiere of saturday night live yes but uh yeah i am i am pumped for this movie i am officially pumped me too i mean i thought the trailer was amazing i i'm loving the cast it's Everything I'm I'm seeing and reading about this movie so far, it just it just sounds awesome. So, I'm I I'm expecting to really like it. So yeah, yeah. if I I I have good feeling about this. I have a, I I really feel like this is going to be a strong movie. So I'm, me too, me too. I'm, yeah. I'm going in with high expectations, high high hopes, high hopes. I got high hopes. Yeah, high apple high pie up in, in the uh, yeah in the sky in the sky pie hopes. hopes. Yeah. I, I don't really know the lyrics of that song. Me neither. <laughs> I, yeah. I was hoping you did. I, I the sky up in the uh, high up high up in the sky. Yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that rhymes with high. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Oops. Anyway, um, so yeah, next week. Uh, next week's still a little up in the air, so I don't think we want to say what we're doing quite yet because it might be subject to change. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much what we decided, right? Yup. Yep. Okay. Yeah, we got it. We got to check with a possible guest, and you know, it's a it's a whole thing. It's a whole guest thing. It's a whole so. it's a whole Misha gosh. Yeah, yeah. So, like, if if you're listening next week and we have a guest, just know, like, that's the person who screwed it up, and we weren't able to announce it yet. So, so send your vitriol to that person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let him have it. Yeah. Get him. 
And if you if you if you say like we just start teaching you this, I will deny it up and down. Yep, absolutely. I will deny it like I'm <laughs> Tina Fey and I just help a kid illegally get into Harvard. Wow, wow! Look at you. You wrapped it all up. Yeah, nice. look at look what I did. So anyway, so next week we're gonna do another movie with the SNL alum, and that's all we can say right now. But until then, nerds out. <laughs> This has been a non-productive media presentation. Executive producer, Frank Hablaoui. This program and many others like it on the Non-Productive Network is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Please share it, but ask before trying to change it or sell it. For more information, visit non-productive.com.